Guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Um, so today is gonna be another push day. Um, but to be fair, what I'll do is I'll just sort of go through tips here and there in regards to sort of exercise setup and why we're doing what we're doing. So you can get a little bit of value from that. I know I've been through this push session a few times now. Um, or I've been through push a few times. This is a session that I'm doing on a Friday now. So I have push on a Monday and push on a Friday. And this is the split that I'm just running with until I go on holiday in a couple of weeks. And then the split's gonna change a little bit after that. Um, also sort of changing after the, the pre-prep diet, which I am currently um, just about coming up to eight weeks into that and approaching 30 pounds down. Hence why this jumper is now, or this hoodie is now drowning me, uh, which makes me feel great. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually relatively happy with where I'm at. Like uh, the diet's going pretty well. It's come off pretty easily. Um, I've not struggled or been hungry at, at all um, because I'm still, I'm still fat. Uh, but I've still got a little bit to lose. I want to pull off another sort of 15 pounds realistically before I push back up. Um, but between now and then, like I say, I am going away for 10 days. So that'll be sort of like a little bit of a maintenance period, a bit of a diet break because it's Shannon's 10 birthday. 10 day piss up. 10 day piss up for Shannon's birthday, yeah. That's all Shannon wants to do, just get pissed. Um, but yeah, that'll be the plan and then post holiday, it'll be a case of transitioning into a slightly different split um, and then basically starting to reverse out from that point whilst we're in a deficit. So just not as, um, basically not as severe of a deficit. So at the minute, if you imagine I'm in sort of this kind of deficit, it'll be more so where I'm reversing food out, but I'm still in a, a smaller deficit. And with doing that, the look is only gonna get better because I'm still, I'm very flat. Like we've had a couple of meals out with clients in the past five, six days, because we had a show. We were in Manchester over the weekend um, for Noah's show. And then Reese had a couple of clients, Matt and Frank compete as well. And then um, I've just been, we just went to go and see Jack Buff as well in Ireland. So we've had a couple of meals out. Northern Ireland. In Northern Ireland, yeah. Sorry to all you Northern Irish out there to Northern Ireland. Um, so yeah, I've had like a couple of feed ups, if you like, in terms of those meals, but I'm still flat because I'm on lower food and I'm still fat because I'm not lean yet. So yeah, basically that's the plan moving forward. Like I say, I'll go through a few bits in today's video as to sort of a few little di different tips here and there, but otherwise we'll just crack on. And then if I don't look horrendous, we might do a bit of posing at the end. He'll look horrendous. You yeah, won't see probably, any I'll, I'll probably do it and then I'll go Pete. Pete. Cut that out. Get it out. Cut that out look awful. So guys, I uh, did calves first, as I always do for push. And then we're on to a like, low incline lateral raise. So you could call it a crucifix, but generally I would argue that if you were to do a crucifix, you'd have the bench higher and you'd almost be coming up sort of in this kind of plane of motion. What we're trying to do here is generally trying to think, drive the elbows out as if towards the corners of the room, like out and back behind you while still keeping the humerus slightly in front of the plane of, of motion sort of through the body. So you don't want to be here, yeah. If you're here, you're probably going to be working through a lot of traps. You want to be here, letting those shoulders roll forward slightly and thinking out and sort of in front of the body. Yeah, don't try and think to go up. As soon as you start to think to go up, that's probably when the, the traps are going to come into it, the scap is going to elevate and you'll probably feel as though you're struggling to connect more so with the side delt. You will still get some side delt. You can't, you're not just going to solely isolate the traps, but the traps are probably going to come into it maybe a little bit more than you'd like if you're trying to solely just bias the, uh, the side delts. But one thing that I will say is that's most important with this movement, and you could argue any movement, is how it feels for you is what's most important. A lot of the time people obsess over what you should do and sort of how the anatomy works and how you should exactly perform it based on what you would expect to feel good. But generally focus on what feels good for you. And if that maybe looks slightly unorthodox or it's maybe not in line with what you would expect to, to be perfect. If it feels good, if you get a really good connection with your side delts and they feel blown up after the set, then keep it the same. Don't worry about changing it.
Good, come on, keep them going, mate. Lovely, come on, keep them going. Yeah, good, mate. Follow. Oh, okay. 50. 50, 50 yeah, reps. 50. That was a quick 50. I knew I'd get to 50. Yeah. Giant set completed. So another thing on that is that where you place the cuff is going to dictate how challenging the movement is. So generally what I would recommend that you do is place it, if you've not got any issues with the wrist, place it almost as low on your forearm as you can because the higher up you go, the shorter that moment arm is going to be and the easier it's going to be to move weight. So you don't, in my opinion, you're generally going to be better off using a little bit less load, creating a longer moment arm and making it more challenging rather than putting more and more weight on the stack and just having the cuffs up here to look like you're moving more weight. When in reality, it's the same thing. And if anything, you're just going to be putting more stress through the joint if you have the cuff higher and move more load. This one. So if you've got this kind of cable or this one, they're both the same. It's just a newer version. So the Cybex Bravo. First the of all, the, the best cable in the world. Even like, obviously the back pad's great for creating stability if you're doing like a standing movement or even just to lock the bench against so it doesn't slide back. But also, if you're unsure if the bench is central, then you can literally just slide it against that. So if you're unsure, put this up, make sure it's in the middle there. And then it's bang on. Nice, mate. Yeah, good, mate. Tell the bench is straight, guys. Just make sure it's in line with this. Wait, why are you talking? Your video is not allowed anymore. That's words, not on my it? video, that's on Finn's video. Finn? It's your video, mate. Why, why are you speaking about me in the third person? I'm right here. Yeah. Your video, it's just Your video. I don't want you in my right, video. Right, I don't want him in my video. I'm being serious. Any you put that in a reel. I don't want him in my video at all. Not having it. Imagine. Imagine. Hey, no, imagine about it. Imagine we did a video. Yeah, yeah, get it imagine out. we both did a video and we were like, right, don't get the other person in. Right, guys, training on my own today. It's a real good session, you know, I'd so, train solo my own. session. Much rather train on my own. <laughs> Any seeds of it, just cut them out. <laughs> Let's 
So we did the uh, clavicular fly over there. So the clue in the name is we're trying to bias the clavicular fibers of the pec. Again, I say we're going to try and bias. It doesn't mean it's going to be solely focused on that. We're still going to get the whole pec involved and even a bit of front delt on that fly. Um, a lot of people will do the cuffed flies instead of with D-handles. It's completely up to you, whichever feels best. We like the D-handles because it saves the ball ache of putting the cuffs on. Um, for the, the benefit of having the cuffs for reducing the joint pressure, etc., maybe for getting a better feel, I actually feel like that costs outweighs the benefit of doing that, and I'd just rather put on the D-handles and get after it. Um, so two sort of higher rep sets there, almost like potentiation sets, which basically means getting the pec warm before we go into some of the, the heavier presses. So we've obviously got the shoulder press now, and then we go into a cable press after this. Legs. Oh, oh I've done it. Easy. Yeah, love it. Trying to control it a little bit more. Solid. Yes, good mate. Good, having a go, having a go. Come on. Yes. Yes. Come on, finish up then. Come on, he's in. Nice, mate. Good. Nice, mate. Good. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, good, mate. Elbows across. <coughs> Solid. Oh, good. That's it. What about? Oh, it's a good thing you had your music in, mate. Huh? Good thing you had your music in. The, the guy was grunting. Some people make some strange noises in the gym. He was grunting, and I don't know if you could hear him in the background, and it was like, uh, he sounded like a cow giving birth. Good. Yeah. 
Yeah, good. Come on. So, uh, obviously, you've done the Cyvex shoulder press. Uh, we prefer that with a neutral grip just because generally it feels more comfortable on the shoulder than being sort of out here in the pronated in that sort of pit position of external rotation. So if you do that movement or if you do a shoulder press and you feel like you get sort of niggles through the shoulder, then try more of a, a neutral grip like we did on there. Um, in terms of like other tips for the shoulder press, so I've had a good amount more weight on there before, but my form has been quite a lot worse in terms of I'm further forward with my hips on the seat. Range of motion has been worse. Uh, tempo has been a lot worse. So although the numbers are down from where I've had them in the past, the actual execution is, is definitely a lot better. So the only form of progression doesn't just have to be in terms of reps and load. So I've definitely improved that in terms of the execution and actually getting more out of my front delt with using less load as well. Um, now we come on to the pre-core cable chest press. So. With this one, um, we're literally just doing a couple of sets on this. So we did two sets on there, two sets on here, uh, three sets on the lateral, two sets on the uh, clavicular fly. Um, with this, so the handles, you can see they're quite long. So you can obviously clip it wherever suits you. So we have it here, because pretty much that's just about where our, our active range finishes. Mine would maybe be sort of there. So you're pretty much working through your full active range. If you can get a little bit more range, then just set it on the next clip and then just get someone to unrack it for you if it's sort of slightly out of it. So like you might have seen, I unracked Reese's right side just because that side's a little bit tight for him. But generally try and set it up so it's sort of within your active range. And then in terms of cues while you're doing the movement, like what I try and think is almost like row the weight back when you're doing the eccentric to really resist it and actually stay on the chest. And then think to press yourself back into the seat so you're not pressing and protracting the shoulders, protracting the scapula, you're pressing yourself back to try and sort of prioritise through the chest and not let the scapula or the shoulders take over. So I do two sets on the costal fly as well. And that is pretty much all of like the pressing musculature, if you like, done. So we've done collicular fly, shoulder press, flat press basically, and then more of a, a costal dominant fly. So this is basically trying to bias the lower fibers a little bit more. Again, it's not just gonna be those, it's still gonna be the entire pec but I've done majority of my movements beforehand in more of either a flat or vertical fashion. So this one is more of in like a decline fashion. Same concept on this in terms of what I said on the uh, cable press, thinking to sort of like press myself back. But on the press, I'm almost thinking to like punch the elbows together. Whereas on this, with it being a fly, I'm thinking to sort of like scoop them from out to in. I'm not thinking to just bring my hands together and finish here. I'm thinking to scoop the elbows together and actually bring the humerus across the body to contract the pec. A lot of the time people on flies, they sort of finish in this position and then wonder why they don't really feel their pec. That's because the pec is responsible for bringing the humerus across the body. So you actually need to get that, the elbows in. Reese is trying to make me laugh.
So basically the cross, broad, cross body tricep push down or cross body cuff tricep push down. Um, this is one of those, so with tricep work, like a lot of people feel as though, right, you have to have one where you're pressing down and one where you're pressing overhead or with the shoulder in sort of an extended position. In theory, it makes sense to do one extended or in this, this position overhead because the long head of the, the tricep, which is basically this one that you'll see if you were to do like a front double, the one that hangs down, that is the one that actually crosses the shoulder joint. So if you're in an extended position, generally it's gonna be actually theoretically getting a little bit more out of that longer head. But ultimately, again, it's similar with like biceps. Like you could do one that's more prioritizing the shortened range and the lengthened range. Like ultimately, if you get stronger at your presses and if you connect well with your tricep isolation work, whether you're doing push downs, overhead extensions, whatever it may be, if it feels safe, it feels progressible and it feels comfortable, that's all that really matters. So don't stress too much because I have, I have clients who sort of say, oh, any, any extended position feels awkward on my shoulder. Just don't do it then. It's not like you're just all of a sudden going to have zero growth in the long head of the tricep. It's still going to grow across all your other movements. It's just sort of, in theory, you're going to bias it a little bit more in a sort of extended shoulder position. Oof. So I'll do three sets on this as well, as I did three sets on the cross body push down. Um, like I've said in loads of videos before, like I don't do a lot of arm work because my arms are quite a strong point. But then I also feel like I quite like having a strong point and I feel like they're not as much of a strong point anymore because I've been neglecting them a little bit. So uh, I've added a little bit more arm volume in just obviously with having this push session now. And also like, it's not demanding. It's quite nice to get a bit of an arm pump. So I'm not like, it's not taken away from anywhere else in my training. So this will be last tricep movement. It's decent, this machine, to be fair. It's quite convenient. You can literally just jump on two different variations. I prefer the bottom one, sort of pressing a little bit more overhead. I don't really have any issues mobility-wise with tricep work, so I find sort of pressing in that plane relatively comfortable. And the, um, the profile of the movement's pretty good for this point in the session, so it's very challenging here, but then it drops off towards the top, like you might have seen those last few reps sort of very sticky here and then as soon as I get past that it 
starts to get a little bit easier just with how the machine's set up, which is exactly what we want really at the end of a session and also just to match the, the strength profile of the tricep. finishing off with those. I've always got on pretty well with those. It's almost like a slightly cross body hammer curl. And what I do just as a small intensifier is I'll do dual arm to start off. And then when I fail at dual arm, I'll go into single arm. So it's basically like a way to extend the set by just having a little bit longer uh, intraset rest pause. So obviously if you're doing dual arm, yeah, you're not really getting much rest here. Whereas if you're doing single arm, the other side gets another couple of seconds before it's, it's, it's time to go again. So that's kind of how I'm extending that set. had a pact I guess we promised each other that we would do abs me and Finn are doing a bit more abs to conclude um, pretty much every session every session so here we are did he say that did he yeah, he's not lying On that, if you ever struggle to feel your side delts, set up like that, so that's gonna put you into that scapular plane. So if you were doing a, a normal standing lateral, you'd wanna be here and not here. That kind of forces you into that. And then just to extend it and sort of as a bit of an intensifier, obviously it's very easy here because the, the joint in, in the, the, the dumbbell is sort of in a direct line with gravity. Whereas here, here, it's very challenging. So just to finish the set, sort of work through that mid-range and don't allow yourself to come all the way down so you're sort of not allowing for any real respite or rest time. It's just a way of extending it a little bit further, getting a little bit more challenge to the side delts. But that's, uh, that's push done. I'll tell you what, I'll do the outro here and then depending on whether or not I look okay, we might add some pose at the end. If I look like shit, this will be the end, so you'll know. Um, but yeah, basically that's push on a Friday. So I obviously have push on a Monday, push on a Friday now. I've taken out the shoulder press that I had on the Wednesday and that is now just a uh, purely back focused session. But like I said, I'm going to be um, changing my split after my holiday um, because basically like, I know where my strengths and my weaknesses are. I don't need two push days. I've not had two push days for that long to be fair, but I need more focus on my legs. I need more focus on my back simple as that um, right now if I was to compete this year I'd be pretty confident with my pushing musculature I think I'd be up there with where I want to be standard wise but I'm not there with my pull musculature or my lower body so I need more focus there therefore a little bit more more time there a little bit more volume there a bit more frequency there is going to be the focus um, but yeah I'll leave it there so uh, current diet position is about eight weeks in, about 30 pounds down. If you want to follow along, uh, I do post a little bit more frequently about it on Instagram. So if you're not already following me on there, then do so. Um, make sure you listen to the podcast once you're in, you're in. I've got to plug it every episode. Um, and yeah, if you've got any questions, please ask in the comments, like, subscribe, and I will catch you all in the next one.